Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Proverbs chapter 12 verse 3 as well as Ephesians chapter 6 verse 5. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this word Lord Jesus. Help us to turn our situations around and look at them from your perspective God. We love you, we praise you in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Proverbs chapter 12, verse three, no one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. We just had this as our scripture conflation before with a different scripture, but I like this scripture just because it, it just goes so nicely with things, <laughs> but it says, Proverbs chapter 12, verse three, no one is established by wickedness, right? There is no security. There is no firmness. There is no assurity. There is no establishment in wickedness. Remember um, that established means um, to make stable, to cause to grow, um, to multiply, to confirm, to make fast strengthen right their their establishment isn't strengthened have you ever seen someone who is established in wickedness and they can never relax right they can never just get a grip and just relax they're always looking over their shoulder they're always trying to figure out how to make their next move even when they have real realistic jobs right and and they're not doing it in a way that is honest. Um, they're always having to look over their shoulder, even to cheat, right? What's the point if you can't get peace, right? You can't be established in wickedness. You can't have that firm foundation. You can't have any surety underneath your feet, right? It says, but the root of righteous will never be moved. Remember, when we accept Jesus into our heart, we accept his righteousness. It is his righteousness that establishes us. It is his righteousness that gives us um, roots, that gives us a firm foundation, right? We cannot be moved. Why? Because we are a part of that, that foundation and that cornerstone that is, that is unbreakable right? So we have to stand in him. We have to trust in him um, that we are firm, that he is going to hold us fast, right? We can't trust what the world is doing. We must trust our king, our master. We must keep our eyes on him. And so it says, no one is established by wickedness, but the root of righteousness will never be moved. And this is completed today with Ephesians chapter 6, Verse five, bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ. All right. So this bond servants um, in our modern day, um, we we don't have uh, slavery here in America anymore. Thank goodness. And, you know, this specific verse, the Holy Spirit was telling me this is any type of indebtedness you have to anyone, right? So this could be your boss. This could be someone who you're working with. This could be someone who you're working for. This could be any person that you are, you are in obligation to, right? Um, if you have to go clock in anywhere, <laughs> then you could you could see yourself in this context. It says, obey your earthly masters. Even if you don't call them your master, okay? It's your boss. Who knows? You don't have to call them master. But it says, obey your earthly masters. That's what it means here. The person who you are subservient to, someone who you have to listen to, someone who you have to work under. It says, obey them, right? With fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ. Why? Because Christ is using that situation in order to help you grow. He's using that situation in order to uh, um, cause your accounts in heaven to grow. 
He is using that situation to build your character, right? These are situations that cause us to to be really established in Christ, right? And it helps us in our mind to be established, right? Because when we accept Christ, we are righteous. But when we go through these situations, we begin to learn the character of our father and how how stable he is and how he can be leaned on and how he holds us, right? When we go through situations where we have earthly masters that we have to attend to and we have to be obedient to, um, it really can try you um, as far as what's going on in your heart right? Because eventually what's going on in your heart will come out. But the thing is, if what's going on in your heart is something different than, than what can be seen, that can be a real stumbling block for people, right? Um, when you have a boss that is treating you horribly, I know, I've been there multiple times, right? It's hard sometimes to remove your mind from this situation. It's hard to remove your flesh from the situation. It's easier to get angry at them and then smile in their face. But God doesn't want us to do that, right? He wants us to forgive so that we can be forgiven. He wants us to love them as as much as we would love ourselves, right? He he wants us to use these earthly situations with these earthly masters and, and deal with them with fear and trembling as if we are dealing with Christ himself, right? Would you want to have Christ as your boss and, he, and you're just feeling some kind of way inside when you're being told something to do and, and he can see all of that inside of you? you and and you smiling in his face that's a sycophant right that you're you're feeling one way inside and you're speaking and saying something another way right that that's not what God wants us to be he wants us in our hearts to have love for our neighbor he wants us in our hearts to see them the way he sees them if they've been hurt he wants us to see that right he wants us to see how we should talk to people even when they're being disrespectful to us we have to rise above that we have to be over overcomers right and Christ is going to cause us to be overcomers but we have to get over ourselves right we have to die to that old man we have to die to that earthly self right we have to labor to enter into that rest sometimes the season that well which season I've, I've gone through multiple seasons of dealing with earthly leaders um, and bosses who um, have really tried my patience and especially it, I feel like it especially tries your patience when you know that you're doing an excellent job like when you are doing the best job of your life and then it's being disrespected or it's being um, tossed aside as if it's nothing and you know you're waiting for your change to come <laughs> or you're waiting for the rapture or you're waiting for something to give and this is just it feels unending right it always feels so unending when you're dealing with people like that but God is trying to build you stronger right he is trying to cause you to overcome and he wants you to obey that earthly master with fear and trembling with a sincere heart as you would Christ, right? He wants you to endure that servitude as if you were serving him. Amen. All right, let's look back at the completion scripture, Proverbs chapter 12, verse three. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. Don't worry, you won't be moved right? You will never be moved no matter what they say to you, no matter what they do to you. You can even get fired, right? But you will never be moved. Peace is outside of circumstance, right? The peace of Christ is outside of circumstance. It is not dependent on your circumstance. So you could be going through that thing and trusting in him that he is going to deliver you and he will not leave you, 
right? It says no one is established by wickedness. Don't do wickedness because you're causing your foundation to crumble. You're you're proving that you're not in righteousness. You're proving that your root is becoming weak. Don't be moved. Be in Christ. Be righteous. Cause your roots to be established, right? And God is going to take care of the rest. He will take care of you. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for holding on to us, God. When we feel weak, when we feel like we're crumbling, when we feel like there's no one who cares, when we feel like we can't make it another day, you are there for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so good to us. Lord God, help us to be established in you, even when our circumstances scream something else. God, help us to be firmly rooted in you, putting our hope and our trust in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God. Forgive me of all of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.